explain maximum entropy Markov model. So there is a difference between HMM and maximum entropy Markov model. Let's compare it. HMM are generative models for sequence tagging, but require us to keep track of many probabilities, account for unknown words, limited context, and it is not obvious how to build in new features. Maximum entropy Markov model are discriminative models, like a neural network that is convenient to use, like simple logistic regression. And there is, a, you, you should note that the direction is from state to observation in the HMM, hidden Markov model, but the direction is the opposite uh, in the MEMM. So both are uh, directed graphs, but the direction is different. And uh, uh, HMM, the alpha probability producing observation 1 to observation T, uh, it, so the very the, when we ch when we want to compare the alphas of them, you you see that in HMM, you should also uh, multiply the probability of uh, transition and emission. And uh, so this is the emission and this is the transition. But for for MEMM, you just condition an observation. You just need the probability of state, the opposite of emission probabilities. And uh, for inference, you see there are some changes, uh, differences between. And so HMM and MEMM, as you see, the direction for HMM, as I said, is from, uh, observe, from latent variable to observation. But for MEMM is quite the opposite. The MEMM inference is is uh, is like this, but HMM needs two probability uh, needs to multiply two probabilities. So if you we can if we combine maximum entropy with the idea of HMM, we we can create maximum entropy Markov model. So it's not itself a classifier for sequences, but it classifies single observation into one of discrete classes. So it's just single. And naive classification possible using hard decision. But maximum, uh, so I'm comparing the uh, one classifier with the MEMM. So I'm not talking about HMM in this slide. Uh, I just say that MEMM combines HMM and maximum entropy. So we model it like this because they are independent. You multiply it from I from one to N because for any Y I minus one, if you condition on that, we go to the next. Uh, state then we go condition and then we go to the next state Be, and because they are independent we just multiply them so condition on both x and y we go to the next state condition on in uh, this one and this one you go to the next state and you you multiply all of them because they are independent and you can see it in this uh, the VTRB algorithm decoding, you can use it. And the maximum entropy model uh, uh, is very important if you want to, to if, you, if you watch my playlist on conditional random field, I've shown you the relationship between them. And so it's the basis, if you want to use MEMM or CRF, if you first understand this, then you can understand CRF and MEMM much better. And this is an uh, 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 interesting article in 2000 
But it all started in 1996, even before that. So uh, when we say center word, this is center word, and the other outside of that is the context. So when we say this context, this context is the outside word. And we are tagging conditions on your context. And for that, we use some features. Our features are like this. For example, the tag of that, uh, of that is NN uh, or verb. And the, the word, the center word is make, for example. If that is true, then we, it's, we set it to one. So it can be very sparse, all of them zero and then one for some entries. So these are feature vectors. We use them. And uh, uh, so this is the model fi is feature, lambda i is the weight. And la large value implies informative feature. So that is the weight of that. That, is, that feature is important for that. And this is our problem in all machine learning, normalization constant, ensuring a proper probability distribution. So this one is also called log linear model and makes no independence assumptions about the features. So you, when, you want to want, you, when you want to use log linear models, you could use it for conditional random fill if you watch my playlist for CRF or this playlist, which is about maximum entropy Markov model. And we don't discuss logistic regression. It's very simple. So tagging with maximum entropy models, as I said, they are independent. So tag condition on one of those contexts because it's sequence of context and sequence of tags. Then, because each word has a context, next word has a context, next word has a context, next center word has a context, next center word has a context, next center word has a context, and it has its own tags. So the context includes previously assigned tags, and beam search is used to find the most probable sequence. What is the model? Model uh, uh, estimation involves setting the weights, values, lambda i. The model should reflect the data. We use the data to constrain a model. What form should the constraints take? Constrain the expected value of each feature. So when we want to fit the log linear model, we want to generalize iterative scaling and improved Iterative scaling are two uh, early algorithms. So there we have two algorithms to fit that log linear model. So the constraint is this. You can say, what is the expectation of your feature? First, you say, what is the probability of that context times the, uh, the feature, that feature, but the context. Then you, you say, what is the probability of another context times the feature of that context? So you can calculate the expectation of a feature, feature i. So if you calculate, the, uh, uh, if you say that the natural choice for ki could be the average empirical count, you can calculated very easily because it's an empirical thing as we do in all statistics we can we have only data so we don't have probability distribution so we add them because for n observations you can just uh, add them and take the average and this is the generalized iterative scaling. As I said in the previous lecture uh, slide, uh, I was saying that we have this expectation of f of i, and we have the expectation f of i, but with the empirical measure. So if this one is very, if the nominator is very close to the denominator, what happens? This becomes one. And what happens to the log? Log of one is zero. 
And what it means if this is zero, it means that it has converged. Your lambda i, your weights are converged, and you have fit the model using this generalized iterative scaling, this beautiful algorithm. And let's compare it with conditional random field. So I have a playlist for conditional random field. MEMM, we have exponential model for each state to tell us the conditional probability of the next state. But CRF, there is no per state normalization, so it's easier. There is per sequence normalization, so we still have normalization problem. Just look at the directions. HMM and uh, naive Bayes, as you see, and MEMM, all of them are directed models, directed graphs. But CRF is undirected. There is no direction between the observation and, and latent space. So another thing is in MEMM, the direction is from observation to the latent, but the HMM is direction is the, quite the opposite, is from the latent to the observation. But MEMM, unfortunately, has labeled bias issue, and that's why I created the playlist CRF, Conditional Random Field, because uh, CRF doesn't have, doesn't have any problem of label bias. And CRF were globally normalized. Because why, why we have a label bias issue? Because you have just one, one relationship. You cannot uh, understand any other information. You cannot leverage any other information. And this classic paper, if you read it, you understand what I mean. So in some state configurations, MEMM completely ignore the inputs. So here, states with a single outgoing transition effectively ignore their observations. So states with low entropy next state distributions will take little notice of observations. And these are great papers.